everyone, my name is Shauna in case you don't know and today's video is going to be a very controversial video so I want to have all of you fully aware of that before we get farther into this video. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, I know I'm going to say some stuff that are going to make some people really uncomfortable, but it's something that I feel very passionately about and I really want to talk about it right now because, well, frankly there was just a season finale for Riverdale and I want to talk about the LGBTQ plus representation in Riverdale because the season finale did something that was not so great. Now I know Riverdale has somewhat of a cult following to some extent, like some people will blindly support every single action that the show makes, so like I know that there will be people attacking me for this. I need to clarify that I am a Riverdale fan, but I have not been the biggest fan of the past two seasons. So I really like the show. I think it's gone a little downhill. I think it is time for the show to wrap up, but I love the cast. I love the writer, even though he made some decisions that I wouldn't necessarily agree with. Yeah, without further ado, let's crack right on into this. So let's sort of talk about character by character, I think is the way to do it. I'm not going to be talking about like all the LGBTQ plus characters, I'm gonna be talking about the more prominent ones, and then there is like one scene that we really, really gotta talk about that is not okay. So Cheryl Blossom is obviously a lesbian, in case you don't know. She has had relationships with Heather and with Tony. I think her relationship with Heather was actually fairly decent. I think Heather was probably the best lesbian representation in the show. Let's be honest, that is just what I believe. I think that Heather was an all-around well-balanced character who wasn't evil or who didn't have toxic personality issues like a lot of the other LGBTQ plus characters do. Cheryl, yeah, she has a very toxic personality which makes her relationship with Tony very toxic. She's done tons of questionable things that really have not been okay. I really like Cheryl. I mean, I cosplay Cheryl. I find that she's an interesting character to watch, but she isn't a good character for LGBTQ plus representation. And I think part of the issue too with Riverdale and with a lot of shows I've been realizing recently recently is the thing is if we had say like 10 shows with LGBTQ plus representation that were popular and like two or three out of those had the characters be toxic that would be fine but considering the fact that like I feel like we don't have most mainstream shows having LGBTQ plus representation in the main characters when there is a show where the characters are toxic or terrible when they're LGBTQ plus then that becomes somewhat of an issue and somewhat of bad representation. So that's where my issue comes in. It starts with Cheryl because Cheryl is the worst because she has such a toxic personality. Like what happened with Josie McCoy and her was like not okay, like stalkerish. What happened with her and Tony, that whole relationship was very toxic. Yet the show is making them soulmates. And trust me, I used to love Tony, but as the relationship continued to progress, it became more and more toxic. Tony, I think, is okay. She's bi with a preference for women. We know that she's gonna end up with Cheryl, whether it be in the final season or whether just like hints at in the future because Heather confirmed that Cheryl and Tony are soulmates. My issue with Tony is that her relationship with Cheryl was very toxic. At some points, her relationship with Fangs feels toxic too, although I feel like her and Fangs have more understanding of each other than Cheryl and Tony. One thing too is Tony is a gang member and that's portrayed as a bad thing a lot and Fangs is bi and he is also a gang member. Why are the only two characters who are confirmed as bi in the show both gang members? Isn't that a little weird? Okay, now let's talk about Fangs and how he connects to other people. So Fangs was in a relationship with Kevin. His relationship with Kevin was not good and it went up in flames. I used to really like Kevin. I used to think he was great representation. However, Kevin as a character has become extremely unlikable to me and made some very bad decisions in the last season, specifically with how he relates to Percival. Kevin was in a relationship with Moose. I think Moose is actually an interesting character and I think he is good representation. The issue is that he was cast out of the show for a while, then brought back, and now he's such a minor character that his only personality is essentially being Kevin's boyfriend. He has no further personality there. Archie's mom is an LGBTQ plus community, but she just broke up with her wife. Why can't we get at least one relationship that's positive, that's LGBTQ+, that they understand each other, they talk to each other really well, and have them be endgame. 
Do you understand me? Because that's the issue here. Why are so many of these relationships toxic in Riverdale? There is no non-binary representation in this show. There is no trans representation, at least as far as I'm aware. One of the few cast members that I know who's openly LGBTQ plus is Shannon Percy, who played Ethel, but Ethel is a character who's made some not so great decisions and Ethel it feels like has sort of been cast out of the show. I mean, she doesn't even exist in Riverdale anymore. She's just Rivervale. I don't know if she's going to come back for the last season, but she's like the only cast member that at least I'm aware of that's bi and she's just really not in the show anymore. One of the issues that I have with the show that feels very strange that I've like talked about this once or twice before online is the fact that all of the relationships in the show have very explicit sex scenes. So the straight couples, males and females, and the lesbian couples, females and females. But there is no explicit sex scene for the male loves male couples, the gay men couples. And I don't understand what the issue is. Like it definitely hints that they are having intercourse, but it's not very explicit. And the thing is, I'm asexual, so like, I don't really want to be watching explicit sex scenes, but at the same time, it is weird and it, I'm almost wondering if there's a fetish involved or if it's toxic masculinity. I feel like it's either fetish or toxic masculinity why the male of male couples aren't having explicit sex on the screen. Like maybe there is some sort of lesbian fetish going on. I don't know. Something weird is going on behind the scenes and I don't know if we'll ever know, but something about that feels very strange to me. There's also an issue with the show with the fact that Jughead was asexual in the comics like me and his asexuality was completely erased in the show. I mean, he has sex a lot. He's definitely toned down the amount that he's having it, but there's been nothing about his asexuality in the show. And I mean, you can have sex and be asexual, but most of his relationships are extremely sexual and there hasn't been any addressing of the asexuality component of it. Another thing to mention about this show is that they did Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which is a show that is known for LGBTQ plus representation, but the majority of the cast is straight, specifically the majority of the cast who was seeing the songs. People voiced their opinions on why they felt that that was wrong. I agree. I'm not super familiar with Hedwig and the Angry Inch, but just feels like maybe they shouldn't have done that. Maybe they should have found a different musical to do. Yet again, another thing that I'm having an issue with in the show is the way that they're Social media presence is queer betting the show, their presence on commercials. They are constantly advertising the LGBTQ plus couples or kisses that happen between same sex or same gender people. But then in the show, these relationships don't play a super big part. And specifically, I'm having a really big issue with the finale with the fact that it is queer baiting to say, oh, Tronica kiss, Tronica kiss, AKA Cheryl and Veronica, they're gonna kiss, they're gonna kiss. Use it in all of the commercials for the season finale, use it in all of the trailers, promote it all online, and then you watch it. And it's just a pointless kiss. It has nothing to do with actual lesbian representation. The kiss was just used as a plot device. And the thing that baffles me and makes me angry is that the show acknowledged that it was queer baiting and they did it anyways. Literally Cheryl says, uh, that's queer baiting. And Veronica was like, A, it's not queer baiting, it's saving the world. What the frickaroni? So they're aware of their queer baiting? yet they aren't doing anything about it and they're just casually writing it into the show. It's weird because it's like they're hyper aware that they are queer baiting, yet they don't give a crap. They just want to draw in LGBTQ plus people to watch their show even though they aren't gonna give these characters and these relationships adequate time and development on the show. So I think I've said everything I need to say. I'm sorry that I got really like passionate about this. I mean, there is a lot of other LGBTQ plus characters that play like super minor roles. There was like Betty's bi awakening scene and then they didn't address it anymore. Like the show just has an issue with not giving adequate time and development to LGBTQ plus characters and relationships. And I wouldn't be so pissed at this whole thing if they didn't use their social media and ads to try and attract more of an LGBTQ audience. That's what frustrates me the most. Stop using your queer characters as a way to get more people to watch your show. Write a good show, 
write good representation in there and then the LGBTQ plus audience will want to watch the show, okay? You understand what I'm trying to say? So this video was all over the place, but I really wanted to talk about this because it's been on my mind for a really long time, especially with this season finale that addressed the queer baiting. That pissed me off to no end. I think that the final season has potential to give us better LGBTQ plus rep, but I don't know if we are going to get that out of this show. I hope that we would get that out of this show, but I'm not really sure. The CW, we haven't really had the best LGBTQ plus representation in shows. I mean, a lot of the shows with LGBTQ plus representation have got cancelled when they shouldn't have been cancelled. Like, Batgirl. Wait, is it Batgirl or Batwoman? I'm getting confused because there was the Batgirl movie that recently got cancelled. And then also Legends of Tomorrow that got cancelled that had LGBTQ plus representation. And then the fact that there isn't super strong representation in a lot of the other shows on the CW like the CW seems to have a little bit of a problem with this and I hope that they address it because some of the shows that they produce are phenomenal but if they don't work on this representation issue they're gonna keep going downhill. Anyways I hope that this video was informative. I hope it gives you some things to think about. If you have any thoughts on the LGBTQ plus representation in Riverdale feel free to leave your comments down in the comment section below. I upload videos twice a week so my next video will be uploaded this upcoming Tuesday and that will be a book related video. I hope to see all of you there for that video and until next time, goodbye!